Hi, I'm Serena Altschul with MTV News. This hour on Radiohead's U.S. tour and Fish's next big show. But first, Rob Halford, who helped establish Heavy Metal's Leather and Studs look as the longtime frontman of Judas Priest, has just come out of the closet. As we reported earlier this week, Halford's new band, called Two, will release its first album called Wire next month on Trent Reznor's Nothing label. Uh, Halford and his bandmate in two, guitarist John Lowry, shot a video called I'm a Pig recently in Los Angeles with Shishi LaRue, a director of gay porn films. Halford stopped by our studio on Wednesday to discuss two, and that's when he addressed for the first time anywhere the subject of his sexuality. I think that most people know that I've, that I've been a gay man all of my life, and, and that it's only been in, in, in recent times that it's an issue that I feel comfortable to address. Um, an issue that has been with me ever since recognizing my own sexuality. Um, something that I've been comfortable with forever. Something that I feel has uh, a moment, and this is the moment to discuss it. A lot of homophobia still exists in, in the music world, um, in all kinds of music. Um, I wouldn't say it's any more phobic in metal as it is in rap or, you know, whatever this music is that I'm doing now. But that's just something that I think we all have to um, address in our own lives, you know. If we have a problem with it, I think we should seek help and find out why we do have a problem with it. I think that uh, it's difficult for everybody, you know, in, in, in making, making the, the decision to come forward and step out and be who you are based on peer pressure, especially if you're a, you're a teenager. Um, that's where a lot of, a lot of the anxiety uh, begins. And so uh, maybe people like myself and others that do step in front of a camera and, and, and let the world know, maybe it is, is, it, it's of some help, you know, it's that, well, there's an individual that has been successful, that's been able to achieve dreams and visions and goals in life and not let the issue of sexuality be something to hold them back. So I think it's, it's an important thing. We'll have more on Rob Halford's new band, too, in the coming weeks. Coincidentally, Halford's old band, Judas Priest, is now on tour with its new frontman, Ripper Owens, who was recruited last year from a Priest cover band in Ohio. Judas Priest plays Kalamazoo, Michigan on Tuesday and Detroit on Friday, with a show that includes only three songs from its new album, Jugulator. Meanwhile, Radiohead returns to the U.S. on March 28th to launch a 12-date tour in Houston. Spiritualized, whose album, Ladies and Gentlemen, Were Floating in Space, is almost as acclaimed as Radiohead. Head's OK Computer will open for them. Bjork may be on board for two Canadian gigs and for the final U.S. dates, April 15th in Worcester and Worcester, Massachusetts, and the 17th in New York City. Meanwhile, Fish will once again return to the Loring Air Force Base in Limestone, Maine, August 14th through 16th for its third annual mega concert. Tickets should be available about two months or so. The Fish Camp says the still untitled concert, which will include several sets, arts and crafts, and camping, will be in the spirit of last year's Great Went, which drew about 60,000 a day. The concert will be, head on the final uh, will be held on the final days of Fish's U.S. tour, which is slated to kick off in mid-July. Fish plans to start recording its next album this spring for a summer or fall release. And finally, Mojo Nixon has accepted the position of honorary team captain for the U.S. Olympic Luge team. The team, which is competing in the Winter Olympics this weekend in Nagano, Japan, sent Nixon a letter in which he was praised as, quote, a fine, upstanding citizen with strong moral fiber who stands for all that is good. Naturally, Mojo accepted. Nixon will release his 12th album in April, which features the song Drunk, Divorced, Floozy, the ballad of Diana Spencer. Remember, this is also the man who wrote Don Henley Must Die and Bring Me the Head of David Geffen. That is the news for now. More news at 10 of the hour every hour right here on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first. I'm Serena Altschul with MTV News. This hour on the questionable status of Alice in Chains and the return of a long-lost influential rapper. But first, according to a coroner's report released Friday morning in New South Wales, Australia, in excess frontman Michael Hutchins was severely depressed when he committed suicide by hanging himself with his belt last November. The coroner took a great deal of time to issue his finding because he tried to determine Hutchins' state of mind before he died. The report says Hutchins was depressed over a child custody battle between his fiancée, Polly Yates, 
Sheets and her ex-husband, Live Aid founder Bob Geldof. Alcohol, cocaine, and the antidepressant drug Prozac were found in Hutchins' body. Meanwhile, Alice in Chains guitarist Jerry Cantrell visited our studio in New York City this week to talk about his solo album called Boggy Depot, coming out in April. It's just been about two years since we last saw Alice in Chains doing MTV Unplugged. In that time, we've heard reports about singer Lane Staley's drug use and the band's possible demise. We asked about Cantrell. Uh, we asked Cantrell about the status of Alice in Chains, and he didn't sound optimistic. You know, there's really nothing up with Alice in Chains. Uh, you know, we've been together for 11 years now, and, and uh, we've done a lot of, a lot of great music together, and done, accomplished a lot of things, and, uh, and that's very special to me. You know, uh, uh, we were a part of a, of a. Uh, of a group of bands that uh, really put put our stamp on the on the map, actually, you know, on, on the world for that matter, which far surpassed where uh, we probably initially thought we would get to, you know. So I mean, that's cool. That's in the books, you know, and that's something we did, and that's something to be proud of. But uh, you know, there also comes a point in uh, in the life of any band, I think, that uh, you know, it's time for time to change and and uh, time to try new things, you know. It's, uh, no, nothing lasts forever. As far as working with Lane again, do you see that any time in the future? Well, we never said publicly that we broke up, and I won't say it now, so. <laughs> it's very much a possibility sometime in the future, but uh, for now, uh, I'm really happy to be doing this, so. Cantrell's Boggy Depot album will feature Les Claypool of Primus, along with Allison Chain's rhythm section of Mike Inez and Sean Kinney. Influential rapper Cool Keith is back after vanishing for several weeks last summer, which cost the critically acclaimed Dr. Octagon a spot on the Lollapalooza tour. Keith is reuniting his former group, the Ultimagnetic MCs, whose 1988 album, Critical Beatdown, is considered a hip-hop classic. Rapper Rakim and the Prodigy are expected, though not yet confirmed, to guest on the UMC's new album, which is due this fall. And that makes sense because Cool Keith raps on the Prodigy track, Diesel Power, uh, on the Fat of the Land album, which also samples the UMC's On Smack My Bitch Up. That is the news for now. More news at 10 of the hour every hour right here on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first.